And as you know, GTUC, any program we start at GTUC, we normally start with uh, seeking the face of the Lord with prayer. So can somebody share a word of prayer with us? <laughs> or you want the presenter to pray? Okay, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you for the gift of life. We celebrate your majesty, King of kings, King of glory. God of all grace, we thank you. We are grateful unto you for the gift of life. Even in the wake of coronavirus pandemic, by your special grace, we are alive and kicking. We say glory be to your holy name. Glory to the Lord. We pray that you be with us. You grant us fruitful in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 So, so, we will start. Okay. Please, can you all see the screen? Can somebody read what is on the screen for us? Guidelines for life. writing examinations. Exams key, how to excel. Good. So our topic for discussion today is guidelines for writing examinations. And in actual fact, examination is part and parcel of life. Whether you like it or not, Life is full of writing exams. It's about examination. Right from archaeology to geology, it's about examination. If, if you complete your course of study at the university level, when you go out, that is where you are going to even write a rare exam. Are you getting it? So life is full of Hello, madam. examination. I'm I'm on and, uh, I normally say that it's like exam is like concomitant of uh, human existence. The what? Get it? Life examination is concomitant of human existence. Whether you like it or not, you write an exam in life. It's an account phase. You have the account. I'm going to take you through briefly how to write exams, how to excel in life. Hello. But when it comes to writing. Academic then at the end of the day, when you go out, you need to succeed. Yeah, so house. when you sign in, they will give you the option to enter your so Everybody exam has the ability to do the well. Link. Okay. Everybody so there. Let me come has the ability to excel academically. Okay. Everybody, everywhere has the ability to do well in life. Everybody. Okay, I decided to, to meet you all so that it will not have any interaction with what you are doing, okay? Hello? Can you continue? Yes, please. Good. So, I wish that you do well to mute your mic so that you do not have any interruption in what you are doing. If not, I have to do so for you. Okay. So, the first step we have to consider. If you want to excel, you want to do well uh, in everything, I think well, when it comes to writing examination, Hello. that you need Hello. to do now. Yeah, good morning. Let me call you back.
Okay. So we are saying that before you start writing any exam, you have to find out from your lecturers or your teacher. You have to find out from your lecturers or your teachers. Like what the exam is all going to be. You don't just start by uh, saying you are going to write exams. Whatever you are going to write on. So you need to first of all find out from your lecturers specific areas. Okay, you have to ask your lecturer or you have to ask your teacher to be specific as possible about what to be on the exam. If you don't know what you are going to write, there is no way that you can do well. So the first thing you have to do is that for you to do well as international students, even as Ghanaian students or Anglophone students, you need to know whatever you are going to write on. If you don't know, there is no way that you can do well, you can excel in this direction. Okay. So, so what I want you all uh, to know is that you have to find out from your lecturers or from your teachers or instructors if you want to do well academically in everything that you do in life. It's very, very important here. Good. And the next point you have to consider is that you have to know the type of questions. You need to know the type of questions you are going to write on. Is it going to be true or false? Multiple choice? Is it type questions? You need to know that. If you know that, then you prepare. You prepare towards it. Once you prepare towards it, then definitely you will do well. But if you don't know what you are going to be examined, how can you do well? So you have to ask how the material is examined. Is it going to be true or false? Multiple choice questions? Is it going to be essay type questions? Or if you take home assignment, the pending exam that you are going to write online because of coronavirus pandemic everywhere, you need to find out even from your instructors, from your lecturers, what the exam is going to, how you will be examined how you will be assessed so that you'll be able to prepare very well for the examination. Good. And then the next one you have to consider is that you need to review your lecture notes or slides. Whatever you are doing, some of you will sit down. You will never go through your lecture notes. You will never go through the slides. You will sit down when it's time for exam, then you'll be scrapping for uh, slides, looking for notes here and there to copy. It will help you. Right from the beginning of the semester, you need to know, you have to review your lecture notes from time to time. You have to know, you have to study it. Review your lecture notes, slides, recopy or rewrite those sessions that are important. Or you may find them to be very probable, examinable questions or sessions. That's what you have to do. So you study, you can rewrite after you have read study. That is the review. You go through, you summarize it in your own ways. Then you know these points are very, very probable, possible questions that can come at the end of the day. Once you do that, then you will be able to do well in everything in life. So we should all bear it in mind. We have to understand that you have to do well, and you need to prepare towards that. And the next point is that you have to gather all notes or slides. You have to do well to gather all those slides, video presentation you may have missed from your lecture or another course which. Once you have them, then you know how to sit down and study. So this one is so clear. If you don't gather the notes, you don't gather the slides, you can't do well. You may be anglophone student, you may even be a first class student. If you don't know the material that you need to prepare, there is no way that you can do well. So you need to know that and prepare accordingly. And the next point is that you have to get a personal timetable for exam. We need to have a personal timetable. Right now, the whole university 
has come out, the university has come out of timetable. But individually, you need to have your personal timetable. And then you set up a specific time to study for that particular exam. And all other activities should be all scheduled around it. You don't just have to do anything anyhow. You have to plan your life accordingly. And once you do that, you will definitely do well. Now, let's consider mid semester exam, classwork, exercises, and what have you. You need to peruse mid semester exam questions, class exercises, and quizzes you took earlier in the class. Some of you will never go through. Some of you don't even you don't even remember what you did earlier in the class. You should go to you should know all the pieces you have taken so far. Right from the beginning of the semester, class work, class assignment, group work. And then you go through them because at the end of the day, the lecturer or your lecturers are likely to put them together and then package them and give them as questions, final exam questions. But if you go through all the main semester exam questions, one thing I know about students is that sometimes if they don't do well in the main semester exam, they will just dump the, the score, the sheet somewhere, which is not the best. Are you getting me? If you get zero, you get one over 30, two over 30, single number, any single number you get, please don't worry. All you need to know is that what didn't I do right? What led me to get this low mark at the end of the day? And then you go through the questions again. You study them. Once you do the remedial way, then you'll be able to do well next time. You come across similar questions or the same questions. Is that okay? Please, are you following me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Let's continue. Yes, sir. Good. So, you need to have a summary or an outline of the examinable topics. You, what, what I mean by examinable topics is that it's like you are, you should be an examiner. You yourself should consider yourself that first of all, I'm going to examine myself. I'm going to have prepare a summary and outline of everything to be tested to get an overview of the whole course or of the whole unit. It's like you set questions for yourself. You will come out of an outline, and then you come out of examinable topics. Like you are the examiner or pre-examiner. You are going to be like pre-examiner, and then your lecturers will be the examiners here. You have to examine certain questions, certain topics, and come out of probable, examinable aspects or topics and prepare accordingly. Once you do that, you will definitely do well academically or in your exam. That is what you have to take note. Good. So, the next point is that you have to have a detailed study of your outline. It's not just, it's not just uh, having the outline or the examinable topics. You have the examinable topics, but now you have to study them and prepare a comprehensive study on that. Are you getting it? You have to prepare a comprehensive study on the sheet for each part of your outline. So once you are prepared fully and you have studied them, my students, beloved students, there is no way you perform purely or poorly in your exam. There is no way that you perform poorly. You will definitely do well in your exam. So when you, after you are prepared like that, then you have now the probable examinable topics and we have done a comprehensive study of preparation towards that. Now you will be able to predict probable exam questions. Predict here means like you are going to be like a prophet. You are going to foresee, you are going to say that this question will come. This question cannot come and it will come to pass. You don't need to consult any false prophet we know we have a lot of false prophets in the system. I hope you know that, that we have a lot of false prophets in the system. You don't need to go and consult any false prophet that I'm going to write exam. 
I want to know, can you tell me what I should write on, what I should prepare on? No prophet can help you. No prophet can help you. You should be your own prophet. So you have to predict probable exam questions. And all, you have to predict test exam questions and practice answering them. You know them. Now you are predicted, you are foreseen, you can foretell that these questions are probable questions in the exam. Now you have to practice answering all the probable exam questions. Is that point correct? You have to practice answering them. And once you do that, you will definitely be in good position to prepare for the exam. And uh, after you have done all that, you have the preparation, then you should have a list of baffling questions, confusing questions, questions that may not be all that clear. Some questions, some points, some topics, some aspects that you went through in class with your lecture might not be all that clear, might not be all that straightforward. You don't understand the aspects that you don't understand. That is what I term as a list of baffling questions. A list of baffling questions. Every candidate, every student, before writing any exam, you should have a list of baffling questions. So it means that, that you should have some questions to ask your lecturer or to ask a student or a colleague, somebody you know is somehow well versed in a particular course. You should be you should contact a colleague or a lecturer where possible. That is what you need. You must always have baffling questions. And some students, from my own experience as a lecturer, even since I started teaching here, that is 2013, at Ghana Technology University College, you finish teaching students, and then you ask them, do you have some questions? Do you have some baffling questions for me? Questions that are not that clear, want me to explain to you or something? And then some will say that, sir, we need the aspect, the areas, the areas. You should know the areas, and you should have some baffling questions for your lecturers. Once you do that, you do well. But you just need the areas, but you don't have any baffling questions. It means you have not been learning, you have not been studying. You need to study. And once you study, once you learn, once you are a studious student or a serious student in life, definitely you have a list of baffling questions. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Good. I wish I wish all of you could mute your mic or microphones. Okay. Can you all mute your mic for me? Doc, please, can you mute it from your side? Okay, I will see if I can. I did some. You have done some. Okay, okay. I think you have done some. That's good. All right, so we can continue. All right, so let's continue. So you need to have a list of baffling questions to ask your lecturers or a colleague, a friend. You have to do that. It's very, very important. Good. Can you continue? All right, let's continue. And then after you have you have come out with a list of baffling questions. You need to study each topic treated 10 times. You need to study each topic treated in class 10 times. And then what it means is that to get an excellent grade in any course you are pursuing as a university student, you have to do well to study, peruse that particular aspect at least, and that lesson treated either face to face or online teaching and learning 10 times before the examination. Is that point clear? You have to study that 10 times before the examination. Some of you will just try and glance to once and you think you are ready for the exam. You can't do well. You, can't, you may be an excellent student, but if you don't go through 10 times, 
That is the issue. You have to go to ten them so that you master them. It's not about memorizing them. Don't bother yourself to memorize the all the aspects. Some definitions you need to memorize them, but you can't memorize the whole coursework or content. What you need to do is that you just go to study them, read them, study each topic treated or lesson ten times, either face to face or online teaching and learning before the examination. Once you're able to do that, you will definitely do well. It will become part and parcel of you. You don't need to memorize it because you have done it several times. And in pedagogy, in pedagogy, in teaching and learning, there is a saying that repetition is the strongest tool against forgetfulness. Repetition is the strongest tool against forgetfulness. So once you do that, you are repeating. And once you keep repeating, you will definitely do well. Okay, so the next point is that you have to organize. After you have done all that, you need to now organize yourself. And I decided to use the two words. This spelling is a British spelling. And then the organize, so they said, is an American spelling. So any of them is acceptable here. But it depends on whether you are writing a British English or an American English. Yes, Good. Yeah. Oh, so, like, so what we have to say, let's continue. So you have to organize, I'm quoting from uh, College of St. Benedict 2020. A well-organized, neat appearing individual will usually get the nod over another equally capable person who is disorganized and careless in appearance. What it means is that if you don't organize yourself, you may have everything. You may be knowledgeable. You may be an excellent student. You will not do well. Yeah. And it's so true in life. How you appear is very, very crucial, very, very important. You need to organize yourself. You need to organize yourself. You may not be all that intelligent, but once you organize yourself, you prepare and you know the way for it. Definitely you do well. An individual who does not organize himself and is careless or disorganized would definitely not do well. And it's just like that in life. When somebody sees you and then you come across the first, the very first time, you meet somebody and you are so disorganized, you are not neat in appearing, you are not nice looking, good looking. You haphazardly you do anything anyhow. Haphazardly, there is no way a person will give you any proper recognition. The same applies to even writing exam. Sometimes the way some of you present your exam, the way you present, can you imagine objective test number students number. answering objective test questions and will not number, will not just number, will just write A B C D A B C D without showing that this is number number one is A number two is B. So is the lecturer a magician? To know that A the one is A or B. No, five, four, eight. You have to organize yourself in everything that you do. So yeah. under that, you don't need to rush the day that you are writing the exam. Don't write to start writing. You have to prepare. There is a saying that if you fail to prepare, then you plan to all fail. Okay, if you fail to prepare, eight, then you plan to fail. Zero. So don't plan to fail by not preparing. You need to prepare so that you will not fail. You need to prepare so that you will not fail. And then you have to organize your points. You have to organize your points here. And then after you have done the organization, you need to understand certain steps or key ways before you start writing. Every examination may consist of key ways or specific verbs. So I will take you to some of them briefly and then you get to understand whatever I'm referring to. Okay. Good. You have to understand the following verbs. For instance, okay, in Chinese time, you go and come back, okay? So we should prepare. I've seen a notice that in Chinese time, that 
the our meeting will end. So we may go and come back. Okay. Did you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Uh, I said in ten minutes that we may go and come back and continue. Okay. Okay, I've sir. Been given a notification that we have ten minutes remaining. So if ten minutes remaining, once it's over, we have to go back and come and then continue on our discussion. Good. So please be the same logic, right? Please, are you using the same logins to come back? No, no, I'm saying that in nine minutes' time, we have to go and come back because I've seen a notification that our meeting, the time remaining is eight minutes or nine minutes. So if the meeting ends, you have to come back, okay? You shouldn't say that it's over. You have to sign in again or log in again. Is that okay? With the Again, as well, is it with the same login? Yes, yeah, the same meeting ID and password. The same meeting ID and password. Okay, all right, thank you. Oh, work. So let's continue. So we have to understand the following verse. One of them is what. Analyze. When you talk about analyze here, it means break into separate parts and discuss, examine, or interpret each part. And then we have compare. Examine two or more things. We have to identify similarities and differences. So we have compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. When you talk about contrast, then you are showing differences. We are showing differences. In the work, you have to understand that. I recently gave a topic on comparing and contrasting false prophets and genuine prophets. Uh, that, I think that video is even online. If you get access, you have to do well to study it so that you understand when it comes to comparing and contrasting. Okay, comparing and contrasting. I gave a topic on that. So comparing and contrasting false prophets and genuine prophets. We are in the system a lot. And we need to know how to do that work accordingly. And we have criticized. It means you have to make judgments. Okay? Everybody be a comparative world. You have to make, you have to criticize the work. You have to examine, you have to analyze it. And then we have define. Define here, you have to give the meaning. Usually a meaning that is specific to a particular course. You have to know that every course has specific lessons or vocabulary or structures or expressions that you need to make judicial use of them. And then once you do that, definitely you'll be able to understand how to go about it. So don't forget that. Compare and contrast. Some students don't know that. Then we have to also understand describe. When you talk about describe, it means you have to give a detailed account. You have to make a vivid picture of work. And then you have to use the characteristic qualities and parts. And then discuss is for consider and debate or argue. So these are all some of the things you have to, for instance, I want to say evaluate. Evaluate, you give your opinion or side the op opinion of an expert. And then once you do that, when you say interpret, you move on, you, want, you get access to it, and then you study all that. You have to comment upon, give example, describe relationship, and then you explain the meaning, you describe, then you have to evaluate. That is about interpretation. Okay. Good. And then we have outline. When you, you come across the expression outline, Outline may not necessarily mean you have to have, write a Roman numeral or letter. So, no, it means you have to describe main ideas, specific points, main ideas or events. That is about outline. And then when you say proof, you support or fast, especially fast, presented in class or in the test. You may come across a question like that where your lecturer will say proof. It means you have to support your past. Take the same precisely. 
And then what about summary? Some of you might have done summary in English. You, you have to give a brief condensed account. And then you have to include conclusions. And you must avoid unnecessary details. You should stop beating about the bush. You don't have to put it about the bush. One is about summary. You don't have to give specific examples, but you summarize them and then you draw conclusion accordingly. And then we can have a question like trace, which means you show the order of events or progress chronologically, sequentially. That is about tracing. Okay. Good. Let's move on quickly. Then you come back. And then we have Perusa. When we talk about Perusa, Perusa is about it's about reading, careful study, vivid study. Okay, you scrutinize it. After we have gone through all that, you have to read through your writer. You have to scrutinize it. In other words, you have to mark your work. Self-assessment. Before you submit the script, you have to mark yourself and you have to know what is going on. When you do that, definitely you do well. No so colleagues. Hello. Hello, colleagues. Yes, please, sir. We, we'll go and come back. So please prepare to log in immediately, okay? All right. Okay. Uh, prepare to log in immediately. We'll conclude very soon so that you ask questions. Okay. The child is Oh, go. 